Welcome to our lecture online. Here's another mechanics problem in the JE test, the advanced test. And let's read it together. It deals with work. And notice it says that the work done on a particle of mass m by a force, it's quite a, an equation, has an i component and a j component and a constant, constant k being a constant of appropriate dimensions. When the particle is taken from a point a0 to the point 0a, along a circular path of radius a about the origin in the xy plane is and they give us four possible answers for the work one of them being zero hmm so let's make a schematic of that real quick so we can take a look at it so we have an xy plane here's the y-axis x-axis here's the circular path of radius a uh, so let's see here, let's take a small little point on here, let's call that the DL. The DL of course is, uh, we're going to integrate it from A0 to 0A, so we start at A0, and we go to 0A, so we're integrating along this path, and if this is radius A, A and this small angle is D theta, then DL is equal to A d theta. Now, of course, that's the magnitude. What about the direction? Well, we can say that dl as a vector quantity is equal to, if we take the, um, this direction right here, notice that it's zero over here, maximum value there, pointing in the negative direction. So dl can there be expressed as a minus a times the sine of theta, because when theta is zero, the sine of zero is zero. That makes sense. There's no component in this direction. And here's the maximum component. So minus a sine theta. And that would be in the i direction. And then plus a cosine theta in the j direction. So we can write dl as a vector component. So now when we write dw, the small amount of work done, that's equal to the product, the dot product of f dot dl like this, which is f times the l times the cosine of the angle between them, or we can simply multiply the x components and the y components together. So if we do that, uh, let's see here. Maybe before we do that, I want to do one more thing. Let me back up just one step, because the sine of theta, if this is the angle theta right here, the sine of theta is equal to the vertical component over the hypotenuse, which is a, so that would be y over a. So I can really write this as dl is equal to minus a times y over a in the i direction. Ooh, I'm forgetting something. Theta. I'm forgetting my d theta. Yes, yes, yes. Let's not forget about d theta. So d theta in the i direction plus a times a cosine of theta d theta in the j direction. Can't forget the d theta. All right, so now we have this. We still have our d theta in the i direction, and then plus a times d. The cosine of theta would be the adjacent side. That would be x and y, so it would be x over a times d theta in the j direction. Notice the a's cancel out, and we're left with dl is equal to minus y d theta in the i direction plus x d theta in the j direction. Now, even though our differentials are not matching up with x and y, we'll just leave it like that for a moment. We're now going to write dw, a small work element for a small motion on the particle, is equal to f times dl. And so our f, our force is equal to this. So that would be equal to k times x divided by x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves power times the magnitude in the i direction of dl, which is a minus y times d theta. And then we get plus f, which is k, times y divided by x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves power and then times dl, which is x times d theta. That would be our dw. 
And then of course, if we want the work done, that's equal to the integral of dw, which is the integral of this, going from theta equals to zero, theta equals to 90 degrees, or pi over two. Now, before we actually try to do the integration, let's take a look. And I probably want to put parentheses around it. Notice that these two components are exactly the same. This is kx minus y d theta over the same denominator. This is kyx d theta, but this is plus, this is minus. So the only difference between this and this component is the sign, but everything about them is exactly the same. Which means that if we're going to integrate them over with the same limits, we'll get the exact same value for these two parts. But one will be negative, the other one will be positive, and they will therefore cancel each other out. And the result is that this is equal to zero. No work done. And so the answer is D, which indeed is the correct answer. That can only happen, of course, if the force is perpendicular to the displacement at all times. And guess what? We should have realized that all along without going to this procedure. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at it and see if we can shortcut this method and really think about what's the direction of the force, what's the direction of the displacement before we try to set up the integral and go through all this work. Because again, you only get three minutes to do this problem and we probably spend more than three minutes just getting to this point alone. So is there a faster way to do it? Let's try that on the next video to see if we can find the work faster by realizing that the force and displacement are perpendicular to each other. And that is how it's done. True, but then if you think you need to integrate it, you need a denominator there. Yeah, but it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, if you take a test, you could probably skip this and just go parentheses, three halves, parentheses, three halves, and just kind of go quickly about it. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of know that's going to cancel out just by looking at it. Yes, and if you're time constrained, you probably want to skip that. Yeah. Yeah, I tend to want to go very systematically during a test, but if you have more time, yeah, there's just not enough three time. Minute test, so three yeah. minutes, you per have problem to, test. You have to. You have to find shortcut methods. Yeah, well, a shortcut is don't repeat, don't write the same thing over and over again. Yeah, don't keep writing all that stuff if you don't need it. If you can get to the concept yeah, right away. If you keep writing the same thing over and over again, you end up making a mistake. <laughs> like I did. <laughs> all right. Yep. Well, we'll try it again using the other method.